Welcome to Mackinac Island, Michigan's top-rated vacation spot June through October. But what about the other seven months of the year? We're showing you the inside life of wintertime on Mackinac Island. Check it out. The first reaction we hear about Mackinac Island this time of year is, wait, you can still get to the island? And how? In regards to the first part, absolutely. And as for the second, well, it depends. Depending on ice conditions, you can take the Starline Ferry, a service that runs to and from St. Ignace three times a day. But if the straits do get a lot of ice, you'll reroute to the St. Ignace Airport. It's a process that leaves commuters in limbo almost daily in the winter, like Smy Horn, who's worked on the island since 1948. As you can see from the people on the boat this morning, a lot of construction going on, a lot of workers from probably three or four different counties here now this morning coming to the island, getting ready for next summer. And who exactly are all these guys? On the 8 a.m. commuter ferry, mostly construction workers. And like any other commute, it's a 30-minute ride fueled by smartphones, the occasional newspaper, and across the board, just a lot of coffee. And this mild Michigan winter has been great for construction renovations. From the Grand Hotel to restaurants and shops on Market Street, it seemed the majority of businesses were getting a facelift this winter. But if you remember in the summer, automobiles are still not permitted on the island. And that means all of those construction materials are delivered the old fashioned way. It's just pretty much any kind of freight that anybody needs hauled. They pretty much, as long as it fits on our, on our wagon and it's not over a certain amount of weight, we pretty much haul it. Including Jacob Hudson, only three or four teams of horses will run on winter weekdays, a busy shift making 10 different trips around the island. Of course, for everyday winter travel around the island, the most common mode is by snowmobile, which makes for a very interesting predicament when snow is below average. It's just a funny time of year. It happens every spring where you'll have snow up on the higher parts, the higher elevations of the island, and in the lower elevations it's, it melts. So you ride your snowmobile as far as you can, get on a bike or walk downtown. But to get from one end of the island to the other, the streets do have to be maintained. A little different from what you'd expect on the mainland. Well, the, the difference would be that we'd leave snow on the roads. That's the job for Robert McGreevy, who's plowed snow on Mackinac Island for 20 years. Basically, we're grooming the roads. We're not. We're plowing some of the snow off and leaving some of the snow on, so snowmobiles can get around. And you still have to have it plowed so that emergency vehicles can get around. So it's kind of a double-edged sword. We visited Robert in a week-long stretch without snow on the island. Our first destination was the island airport, normally his top priority when snow does come in. When the boats quit running, just constant aircraft out here. You get all the people you saw commuting on the boat today will have to fly over. But for us, not a whole lot of powder to take care of. So what's a crew to do on Mackinac Island in a full-fledged automobile? You cruise. I like to take care of the island, and I like to know that uh, people can get around and they can get off the island in the winter. You're a custodian of the island is what you are, and you're taking care of it. And I like doing that because I love the island so much. For the majority of island workers, the day ends at about 4 o'clock. That's just enough time to catch the last ferry back to St. Ignace at 4.30, drive home, and get ready to do it all again tomorrow. It's just a different way of living, a different lifestyle. Hey, welcome back to Mackinac Island in the winter, a place where about 500 people will reside year-round, including school kids. So how are they getting to school? What do their classrooms look like? We're showing you that today on the island. Albert Mosley and his family have attended Mackinac Island Public School for five generations. We just kind of uh, get up, eat breakfast, do our homework, do our reading if we need to in the morning. Ready? And then we will go out, we will start the we will let the storm, we will warm up. Now we will make sure everybody has their things and we'll ride down to school. And the same way that adults get around on the island, that's how the school kids commute too. 
They can get a certificate when they're 12, take the class, pass the test, pass the driving test, and then they can get their license to drive snowmobiles. And the ones that are too young, you know, they'll come to school in a trailer, they stop at the front door, kids jump out, run into school. You know, it's just like hopping out of a car. They're just so used to it that it's, it's not a big deal. School superintendent David Wasso is used to the quirks of the island life, but just like anything on Mackinac, there are constant misconceptions to dispel. The first one is usually uh, you have a school. Uh, you know, people don't believe we have one. Um, and then other things, uh, anywhere from, you know, what kind of education can you get on an island that small? And I would put, you know, our kids up against any of them. And they do. Last year, the robotics team went to the world championship in St. Louis and placed in the top 2%. So we can just unhook it from the thing, take it back, oh, unwind okay. it, get it out of there. For 11th grade teammate Grace Jakober, robotics is just a complimentary step to aircraft. I am a student pilot and I thought that doing robotics would um, help me with that because, you know, working with aircraft and, you know, mechanics and stuff like that, I think that helping build a robot would kind of benefit in learning some of the skills that I might need to progress with that. The entire robotics team is comprised of about 10 students, which is pretty big in the grand scheme of the school. Currently we have 64 students, K through 12. By grade, that breaks down to the single digits, with the graduating class of 2017 adding up to four seniors. They do get to know each other very well. Um, you kind of have to get along, because if, if you only have one or two classmates and you're with them the bulk of the day, you pretty much need to get along. And I think that's a, that's a good lesson for people, too, in life, that you know, you're, you're going to be with people at a job or in school or in life or your neighbors that you just have to get along with and, uh, and make the best of it. And I think our kids do a pretty good job here. And if you're at a sticky spot with your other two classmates, you do what any other high schooler would do. You make friends with the next school over. In this case, that's Beaver Island. On Friday, we went to the airport and picked up the rival boys and girls varsity basketball teams for the homecoming game versus the Mackinac Island Lakers. So we're in the sleeping situation. This is the room. You bring an air mattress or some of the schools supply those little gymnastic mats. It's usually a cafeteria, gym floor, sometimes it's a classroom floor. Of course, there's a lot of action before anybody is heading back to the sleeping quarters. By 6 p.m., the stands are filled with Islanders of all ages. Final score for girls is 34 to 33, and guys 53 to 49, both wins for the Mackinac Island Lakers. The victories are topped off with a homecoming dance and just the right size for the school library. They do get some great experiences here. I'm not sure they fully appreciate it and won't fully appreciate it until they're, they're away from here for a while. They do have some unique opportunities and, uh, and for the most part, um, they take advantage of it educationally, so it's all good. Reporting for Michigan this morning, I'm Jenny Bouchelle.